Hey, music educator friends, this is Lori Orr. Thank you so much for joining me for this virtual presentation of arts integration through music. I want to say a big thank you to Indiana Music Educators Association for inviting me to present at this conference. I want to share with you some of the music that I created for my students, some tips and tricks so that you can collaborate with your STEM colleagues and integrate your music program with their STEM program. I've been doing this for a couple of years and it's super fun and it's a great way to start the STEM and STEAM pipeline for young people. Welcome to my presentation, Out of This World, Arts Integration with Music. Hi, I'm your presenter, Lori Orth, and I'd like to share a little bit about who I am and my journey. I teach space exploration in my music classroom. In 2012, I began my own business teaching general music classes to the homeschool community. Innovation flourished in fun ways, including incorporating space exploration and rockets into my curriculum. I wrote space-themed recorder pieces for my middle schoolers. In 2019, I published my first book, Rocket Recorder. It teaches sight reading skills and space exploration simultaneously. I'm a big space fan and I can't wait to share that with you. This has led me to STEM and space educators. I'm a teacher liaison with the Space Foundation in Colorado. I volunteer with the Air Force Association as a way to give back to my country. And I'm a contributor to several publications about how I teach arts integration. Now I focus on teaching educators how to use my curriculum. I've taught educators in Nigeria. I've presented at a NASA Johnson Space Center Space Educators Conference. And additionally, I lead vocal warm-ups for my church choir, sing with several civic choruses, and as a soloist. I've developed a YouTube channel to facilitate effective practice for my students with lots of resources there for you. I'm a frequent guest on podcasts, including Casual Space with Beth Mund, Enhanced Life with Music with Mindy Peterson, Take Notes with Jen Rafferty, and Musings from the Cheap Seats with Neil Anderson. I was selected to be a NASA social media influencer. Here's how it all started with a recorder piece about SpaceX grid fins, which helped steer the first stage rocket booster back down to Earth. Stick around to learn more about these cool astronauts who play musical instruments in space. Get ready for Out of This World, Arts Integration with Music. If you're not familiar with the term STEM, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. There's something missing from that though, it's the arts, and that's a big passion of mine. So there's another acronym called STEAM, and that includes Science, Technology, Engineering, and then the A can stand for a couple of different things. Some people think the A stands for art, just art just visual art, that's it. Other people think that the A stands for art and design. And still others, myself included, think the A stands for the arts. And last but not least, I also like to think that the A stands for arts and humanities. So that you can bring all of those things together and teach an integrated multidisciplinary approach to your students. Not all students respond to the same things. Some of them are visual learners, some of them are oral learners, and they need different approaches. And that's what this approach that I'm gonna share with you brings to the table. You'll be able to reach students that you might not have had a lot of participation from, and, and it will help them in their other classes as well. It's just, it's so cool. So I'll be sharing some tips and tricks, how to collaborate with your faculty members, and hopefully be able to shine the spotlight on your unique, innovative music program that also encompasses STEM and STEAM. So let's get started.
Now we're moving on to the hands-on portion of today. All of these songs were written for recorder, but they also work really nicely for boom whackers and for barred instruments, xylophones and things like that. Or if you have keyboards on iPhones, that would work as well. Our first song is called Spacesuit, and it is the easiest song of the four. And all four songs are based on the same accompaniment. They just get a little bit harder. First of all, you want to check and see where the treble clef is. What's our note? Starts on G, and we have an A, a B, and a C. It's eight measures, and there's the double bar line. All right, we're going to sing it first. The second song is called Space Ops. It stands for Space Operations, and this encompasses a lot of things in the space world. But I'm focusing with this picture on mission control. And this is NASA mission control, and you can also find lots of other pictures if you just type into Google images of NASA mission control. Mission control is where a lot of people take care of the mission and they are on the ground and there's maps and there's all sorts of computer readouts for them to look at and to follow the flight and then they can guide the astronauts from the ground. This next piece is called Space Tourism. Space Tourism has become a really big thing, especially lately. If you've looked at the news within the last couple of months, there have been two suborbital flights. The first one was with Virgin Galactic, and Sir Richard Branson got to go with a few people up into space. And the second one was with Jeff Bezos' company called Blue Origin. And he and his brother got to ride with a young person from Europe, and also they got to ride with Wally Funk. And Wally is this amazing 82-year-old woman, and Jeff Bezos knew about her, and he reached out to her and he said, we've got a fourth seat available. Would you like to go to space? And so she did. Now, let me give you a word about suborbital. What does that mean? Well, orbital is orbit. Think about like if you've got the Earth, and if you orbit the Earth, you go up, and then you go around it. That's orbiting the Earth, okay? Suborbital is you don't go fast enough to orbit. You go up and you come back down. But they went high enough to where they were in zero gravity, and so it's called a suborbital flight. There's some uh, discrepancy over how high is space, but in my book, they went to space. This last song in the Space Dog Suite is about my dog, Talia. And it is a song that you can play on the recorder or the boom whackers or how it, whatever instrument you want to play it on. But it also has lyrics. And there is a prompt in my book 
about where else would Space Dog go. This song has a little bit of a language arts component if you want to go there. You can do it in your classroom as a group assignment, creating their own verse with rhymes about another place that Space Dog could go. Roger roll, Discovery. What difference does it make what kind of music you use in your classroom? I found it made a tremendous amount of difference. My students were more interested in learning. They were more tuned into sight read. And that's really what I set out to do. There was less memorizing of their recorder music and more reading. And that's because as we got more proficient, we could do two and three and four pieces in a row in one class period. We'd start with a picture, we would look at it, we'd transition to the music, and then we would sight read it. They would sight read it. They would help each other not to play in the rests. There was a lot of leadership that would bubble up. And it was really different. It was a different dynamic than what I was seeing before when we were doing these um, nursery rhyme centered songs for beginner recorder music. They were staying with the subject more and longer outside the music classroom. They were looking things up themselves. They were curious and we didn't have time to go into it at great length, even though you might think, oh my gosh, you were teaching science in your music class. No, I wasn't. Um, I was just using it as a hook and I was just showing them some pictures, giving them some very elementary information about wearing spacesuits or mission control and things like that. And it just turned on these light bulbs and it was a fun place to be. The chemicals that need to fire for you to have a good time were firing and you think, well, what's engagement? What does it mean they were engaged? It was relevant. They were into it. They enjoyed it. And what I also saw is students who weren't really excited about being in my class in the first place, which you're like, what? What do you mean they didn't want to be there? Those kids turned around and they became much more involved and much more engaged. I had a student who was very sensory um, aware and things like loud sounds were difficult for him. And sometimes he would have to wear noise canceling headphones in order to even get through a music class. He didn't participate that much because it was challenging for him to be in the classroom. Once we started talking about space exploration, he was so much more involved. I would love for you to reach out to the STEM teachers in your building and find out what they teach. Let's start with space. What do they teach about space? Is that in their standards? Do they teach about the solar system? Do they teach about the International Space Station? And if they do, when do they teach it? Does it happen at the same time every year? Is it possible that you can coordinate so that you're teaching your space themed songs in your music classroom to your recorder students at the same time that they're learning about space in their STEM class? That would be the best. Unfortunately, that may not happen because some schools will teach space themes at the beginning of the school year and your recorder students may not be ready yet to put the whole recorder reading music together at the beginning of the school year. I have told you, I'm, you guys know I'm a space fan. I'm a space aficionado. And I know that your schools may have something else in the STEM world that they are focused on. You can use these songs for other purposes. 
take off the titles, get new pictures, and you can make them be about anything. If your school has a garden and the big STEAM project, the STEM project is about the garden, have songs about gardening. And you can write the song Space Dog about gardening, planting seeds in the yard. Planting seeds in the yard, gardening is not hard. Got a smile on my face. This garden is my favorite place. How about that? So you can change these little tunes to fit whatever your STEM subject is at your school. So if you want to keep the space theme, go for it. What are some of your favorite nursery rhymes to teach your youngest students? Could some of those music pieces be repurposed? Could you write some new lyrics, perhaps with some direction from one of your STEM teachers? I did that this summer and I rewrote the words to Mary Had a Little Lamb. And what do you think I turned it into? Of course, Mary Had a Little Rocket Ship and I taught it to some girls at Girl Scout camp. They loved it. Five and six-year-old girls were learning about rockets. Check it out. Mary had a rocket ship, rocket ship, rocket ship. Mary had a rocket ship on her way to Mars. She made lots of oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. She made lots of oxygen so her crew could breathe. Here's some audio from a recent Zoom presentation that I did for the Space Foundation. In it, I explain how I came to write space-themed music. In 2017, I decided to teach my older students the recorder. They had not had it before, they were middle school students, and they, I thought it would be a great idea for them to learn how to integrate everything they were learning about reading music by learning an instrument. And so I got everybody ready to start their recorder lessons. And the mission that I set out for was that they could read music and play an instrument, that they would put all of the things together that we'd been working on. And that's what we set out to do. And that was part of the standards. So we ran into a problem. Beginner recorder literature is written for younger students and it never was on my radar because I'd only taught younger students recorder and they never had a problem with the literature. But all of a sudden I was teaching middle school students and they didn't want to learn nursery rhymes. And these are some of the titles of the songs in the beginning recorder literature. Mary had a little lamb, hot cross buns, um, down at the station at Humpty Dumpty and it was not working for my students. And my wonderful class of well-behaved students started to go south and get squirrely and they were um, not enjoying it and neither was I. Um, and I like to say that space came to the rescue and before integrating space exploration, these were some of the things I was seeing. I was seeing insufficient practice. They weren't practicing at home. They were coming to class unprepared. There was a good bit of off-task behavior. They were squawking through their folk songs. And last but not least, it was an unsatisfying experience for all of us, myself included. And you might want to wonder, how did space come to the rescue? Well, I am a space aficionado, and this is why. I'll tell you why I'm a space aficionado. My oldest son went to college to study mechanical engineering and he went to a school down in Daytona Beach, Florida called Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and he decided after his first semester that or his first year that he wanted to change his major to a brand new program that they had called commercial space operations. I'd never heard of that. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was lucrative and I was quite frankly a little concerned that he was going to give up something like mechanical engineering for something that I knew nothing about. And so I did what a lot of parents do and I looked into it. And 
I found the NASA website, I found the NASA STEM website, and as a music educator, I was like, oh, what's in here? This is so cool. And then I started learning about commercial space operations, like um, all the commercial companies, SpaceX, United Launch Alliance, Blue Origins, Virgin Galactic. I started watching launches, and I became a space nerd and loved it. And my background has been so full of arts and so full of music, and I've had very little STEM myself. So it was kind of cool to do all this self-tutoring and, and learn these things from YouTube videos and things like that. And it also was a neat way for me to talk to, with my son. And instead of having these one-syllable answers from him, I would say, what are you learning in your payloads, in a, in your payloads class? Um, what are you doing in your orbital mechanics class? And he would tell me, and I was really interested. And it was so much of a, who knew this was gonna come from it? It was just such a blessing that I got to learn all these neat things and um, have this communication with my son when he was in college. So, the next picture, here's a couple of pictures from his college career. Those pictures in the far left, um, he came home for a vacation and he asked, I was asking him about orbital mechanics and I didn't know anything about it, so he gave me a lesson. And he drew this uh, neat thing and he was talking about all the different angles and the elements of orbit, which I eventually wrote a song about. And he got to work with Blue Origins and he sent a biological payload up in May of 2019. Um, he got to go to Europe and do some analog astronaut mission stuff. And then he graduated. Um, and this little picture in the middle that says, don't stop yourself from achieving your dreams, hidden dragon. That was a little piece of paper that he drew and that's his drawing. And he slid that into his little payload that was on this Blue Origins flight. So it went up to space and it came back down and he took it out. That's why it says Hidden Dragon. Um, so yeah, now he's got this piece of paper that's been to space. Back to my students. My students were Star Wars fans. I really wasn't, but I got this picture of myself when I went to Disney standing next to the Millennium Falcon and I put it in my classroom and my students thought it was kind of cool. It got me a little bit of street cred with them. And one day when they were not filing into class nicely. They were talking about the Millennium Falcon and they really weren't getting ready for class. I just jumped in there and said, okay, who would like to learn about reusable rockets? And it really stunned them. And they were like, what is she talking about? So I began to tell them in an effort to rein them in and get them ready for class about reusable rockets and about this company called SpaceX because it's really cool. And they were so intrigued and they were so engaged. And then we trans, um, we transferred right into the music and they were still kind of goofy. And when I went home that day, I was thinking, how can I get back that level of engagement, that glimpse that I'd seen from them? Maybe if I found some music that was about space and rockets, maybe that would work. So I started to look for music online about space and rockets that was specific to recorders and I couldn't find any. Now, I did go to the NASA STEM website and they do have a little bit of music on the Jet Propulsion Laboratories website. They have a space musical and it's more geared towards high school students. It's about the solar system. It is super interesting and it's wonderful and it's free and you can download it, but it was too hard for my students. So I thought about what could I write about? And my students loved learning about the first stage boosters returning to Earth or onto the drone ship. And I thought, that's what I'm gonna write about. So I put together a, an easy piece with the four notes that they knew how to play on their recorders. And I was thinking, what can I call it? I'll call it grid fins, because grid fins are these steering mechanisms on the sides of the rockets. They're cool, and that's the name of the piece. And so here we go. This is grid fins, and I brought it into class. My sister is also a music educator and she created a really fun jazz accompaniment. And this is how we went. And the students loved it. They looked at the picture. I said, those are steering mechanisms. Rockets are different than airplanes. They don't have wings. And that bottom picture is a picture from a live shot of a rocket launch. 
and the grid fins have just deployed on the first stage booster as it comes back down to Earth. And now let's look at the music. And that's how I started class. And they were so engaged and they were so willing to pay attention and play and accomplish what my music standards were, which was to have them sight read music and play an instrument. And at the end of class, one of my students said, what are you gonna write for us next week, Mrs. Orth? And I thought, what am I gonna write? This lesson plan took a while to put together, but I saw that a good thing was happening. And so I continued to write music. And I did that every week for the rest of the year. So you can just call me Space Mozart. I wrote a lot of music. Um, here's one about spacesuits. Same thing, the picture is the hook. I don't say much more than that's an astronaut on the International Space Station. And he is wearing a spacesuit. They have to wear a spacesuit to stay alive. And they look at the picture and they get engaged and all of the uh, brain chemicals for having a good time start firing and the dopamine and the um, oxytocin start happening. And then they're like ready to learn. And then we move to the music. And so we have that one. I have, um, I launched into things about um, NASA's new rocket, the Space Launch System. And I wrote, this was in 2018 when this was happening. This was during the time of the first um, Falcon Heavy rocket demo launch. I don't know if you guys remember that when um, Elon Musk put a car into orbit. And my students were so excited about this. And I thought, well, I'm gonna write some music about this. So I have six songs in my book that are about Starman. And they get progressively harder. Uh... All right, let's learn about some of these astronauts who are also musicians. Upper left-hand corner is American astronaut Jessica Meir. She brought a piccolo with her to the International Space Station and she played the theme to Star Wars. That's her below with the saxophone. I heard on a podcast that she said she was going to bring her own saxophone mouthpiece because there was a saxophone on station. And I just thought that was so cool. In the middle of that's astronaut Katie Coleman. She's a flute player and she played a duet with a rock star named Ian Anderson. He's in the rock band called Jethro Tull. And you can get a video of that on YouTube. Um, far right, that's Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. He played and sang a lot of David Bowie on the International Space Station. You can check him out on YouTube. And then the guys on the bottom, don't they look like they should be in an Irish pub? That's on the International Space Station. And then the astronaut playing the keyboard, he has to attach himself to the side of the station and to the keyboard because in zero gravity, something's gonna move. The keyboard doesn't stay where you are when you press the keys down, it moves away from you. So those are some really cool things to just make all this STEAM subject integration click for your students. Make a bulletin board, put this out there, watch YouTube videos. If you need something for a sub plan, go pull some of these videos off of the internet and put those together or have them for homework, have them on your Google Classroom so that your students can look at these astronauts playing instruments in space. Here are some tips to help you feel comfortable collaborating with your STEM faculty members. If your school is having a STEM day, why don't you turn it into a STEAM day and incorporate the arts into that program. Imagine your chorus rounding out STEM day. And at the end of the day, you can say, all right, and now the fifth grade chorus is gonna come up on the risers and we're gonna close down our day about space, singing the Space Explorers Anthem. And maybe your students will have worked together or on their own to write a second verse for the Space Explorers Anthem song. And then that way, they will have time to think about what they're learning in their STEM class outside the STEM class. They'll think about what you've been teaching them outside the STEM class. And when all of that happens, that's where all of the amazing opportunities and creativity really starts to shine. You can plan a chorus concert where you feature some of this space themed music, or if you repurpose it for whatever your STEM program is focused on this year, 
that could be a way to share the spotlight and shine the spotlight on how innovative your music program is because you are collaborating with your STEM teachers. I want you to reach out to your faculty colleagues and I want you to find out who's talented. I want you to find out who has been in choir, who's been in band, who plays an instrument, who has the training or the desire to get up in front of a group of people and sing. Ask them. After speaking with your administration and getting the go-ahead, put together a program that features some of your colleagues and be willing to coach them. They may need it. Um, you don't want them to go on stage feeling uncomfortable. You want to prepare them for success just like you do with your students. So offer a few coachings. Another way that you can collaborate with your STEM teachers is to encourage them to invite an aerospace company to come and talk to your students. After studying space exploration in their music class and in their STEM class, then they can learn from a company that makes something that goes in a rocket or that makes a part of a satellite or some kind of widget that is part of the aerospace industry. Invite somebody from that company. Now, you don't have to do this. You can encourage your STEM teacher to make that phone call. You want to reach out to that company and you want to say, hey, we're doing something really cool at our school. We would like you to send a really engaging young engineer or young employee. It doesn't have to be someone who's an engineer. I want to encourage you to request a female employee, a young female employee to come and talk to your students. Young girls need to see other people who look like them in STEM fields. And I would encourage you not to have a great big gym assembly. That can be really overwhelming. It won't be as impactful as if you had something on a smaller, more intimate scale where students can ask questions, where your guest isn't in front of 600 students. And that is a great way to involve the community. You can also invite that person back for your concert to say a little bit about what they do. That person might be a musician. They might want to play on one of your songs as well. That would be so cool to have one of these young engineers come and pick up a recorder and play right along with your students. Or you could invite one of the aerospace executives to speak at your concert. Give them a few moments to talk about what they do. Let them feel important. You can talk about how your students are studying aerospace and draw them in. You would be surprised. Talk to people within your school community about fostering those relationships because that's how you get grant money. For your concert, I want to encourage you to also reach out to your local media. Make sure your school puts it out on their social media, but also call up your local newspaper, talk to your local TV station, have them come out. Have them come out and take video of your students learning, singing, doing all of this cross-curricular activity and make a big deal out of it. Invite them to come to your concert. Let them know ahead of time. Our news is so full of bad stories. We need to have good stories out there. Help shine the spotlight on your innovative music program. Ask somebody to write a news article about it, or you can write an article and submit it. Just call whoever your local newspaper is and ask them how to go about doing that. You can also submit it to your Music Educator Association. We have newsletters. They're always looking for content. Write a little blurb, send it in. Here's a picture of my students learning space exploration in their music classroom. And we did a big collaboration in our school. And then send me a copy. Speaking of sending me a copy, I would love to hear from you, especially if you incorporate these ideas. Send me what works, tell me what didn't work, and I will put all this on my website because we need to have best practices. And if you do something and turn it into a great big deal, I want to know about it and I want to share it with other people. I have lots of resources for you in a Word document. The links are all live and you can click and go get lots of free stuff from NASA. You can also contact your space grant consortiums. They are in every state. So for Indiana, it's the Indiana Space Grant Consortium. Call them up. Ask them for NASA swag. They have it and they will be delighted to send it to you. And if they're like, how did you know we had this? You could say Lori Orth, music teacher, told us about it. 
they have it and it's our tax dollars at work. They would love to come out to your school or they will send you the swag. And you can make cool bulletin boards with all the NASA meatball logo stickers. You could use those as note heads and make a really cool bulletin board. Ask some of your parents who are artsy to do that if you don't want to do it yourself. And you could make a beautiful bulletin board. You could also get NASA ringtones. I am a total geek and I have NASA ringtones on my phone. So when my alarm goes off, this is what I hear. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. They're free. Download them. They're fun. Roger roll, Discovery. All right. I want to tell you about two things that I want you to know as brand new space fans. One, the Inspiration4 mission is happening in September unless it gets postponed. And it's four civilians who are going up in a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and they will orbit the Earth for three days. There's going to be a Netflix special about it in September, so check it out, learn all about it, share it with your students. And then you also need to know about what NASA is working on right now. They've been working on it and they are focused on going back to the moon. That mission is called the Artemis program. Just like we had the Apollo program in the 60s, this is now the Artemis program. I want you to be in the know. So the Artemis program has the Artemis generation. We are part of that. Your students are part of the Artemis generation. It will be the first woman and the next man to set foot on the moon. Make sure you talk about it like that because in the old days, it was just men that went into space and now women are gonna go to the moon. You can get tons of resources for free on the NASA website. If you are interested in that, go look, go print stuff off. There's beautiful free posters you can print off from the NASA website and there are coloring pages. I love coloring pages. Share that with your art teacher. Um, you can hand them out in your classroom. You can ask students to color them and put them on your bulletin boards along with your NASA swag note heads that you're gonna make and put something on the staff with on your bulletin board. And I hope that you enjoy all that. There's also a NASA selfie app and the NASA selfie app takes your picture or you can aim it at your dog or you can um, you can do your school mascot and it puts them in the frame of a spacesuit with some type of a galaxy. You can choose different galaxies. It's really cool and you can put that on your bulletin board as well. Thank you so much for being part of my arts integration with music presentation. I have a huge shout out to Indiana Music Educators Association. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Beth Slusher with the Give a Note Foundation and my own Georgia Music Educators Association. Please don't hesitate to contact me, email me. I would be happy to answer your questions and to collaborate with you to help you have a fantastic year. I hope that you have taken some notes about how you can incorporate space exploration in your music classroom and how you can collaborate with your colleagues. I look forward to hearing from you and learning from you as you use this material at your school. Remember, music matters and so do you. See you next time.
One, liftoff. 